This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. You're listening to the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast. And now, here's your host, Lisa Rangel. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the 19th episode of the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast. I'm Lisa Rangel, host of the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast and founder of Chameleon Resumes. We are an executive resume writing, LinkedIn profile development, and job search consultancy firm that helps executives and high potential leaders land their next position faster. And today's podcast show topic is about attending conferences. I want to show you the prep you should do before and the follow-up you should do after the conference so you can make meaningful connections and maintain them. You know, most people yearn for human connection in our technologically connected world. And and meeting in real life at industry and professional association conferences can help you not only learn what you need to stay on the forefront of your industry, but help you meet the people that will help you stay ahead in your field as well. So, and as always, The key is to do this before you need to tap these resources for your job search. When you attend conferences and you cultivate new contacts, you're living that practice of being a lifelong learner. These types of people, the lifelong learners, the connectors, they're always in demand, always in demand, just naturally. So we're going to talk about the best way to prepare before and the best tactics to do after to follow up after a conference to make you look like one of these proactive, life-learning, in-demand people. So let's do this. In past episodes, we talked about the only way to truly protect yourself from job loss is to pretend you're fired today. Make a list of activities you would do, like we're going to do today, to start to find your next job. And then do these while you're working. Doing proactive activities to keep yourself in demand when you don't need a job is the key element in the Pretend You're Fired Today podcast action list. Keep your network primed active. So this way you are in the forefront of your network's mind and you're creating demand for yourself and what you do consistently. I want you to be in demand when you need it. So the key is for you to build it before you need it. This way, if your job situation changes unexpectedly, you already have pent up demand for what you do by doing these actions that I'm going to show you here today. In episode one, we said the first thing on that pretend you're fired today action list is dusting off that resume, getting it up to speed. And we covered in the first eight episodes how to format your resume according to today's trends for maximum impact. And we've spent following four episodes after that focusing on your equally important document of your LinkedIn profile. That needs to be maintained as well. And in the last few episodes, some of the topics we covered are how to work with recruiters, the five most common career mistakes that I see smart people make each and every day, how to set up informational interviews, staying in demand with your competitors, easy ways to connect with your network when you don't need them, the real secret behind job boards. So you're going to want to review those episodes or revisit them or or visit them for the first time if you're just joining me today. But today, we're going to cover attending conferences, the before prep and follow up after. So here goes. Here's uh, four steps for you to do to prepare before the conference. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, but if this is all you get to do, you're going to still be ahead of most people who attend conferences really on the fly with no prep. So step one is really simple. Ask your network of colleagues who's going. Don't assume you know. Don't assume people are just automatically telling you. Ask. Make a point of scheduling events. Look at the conference roster and schedule events in a way to ensure you're not only nurturing these relationships with your colleagues, because those are important to nurture relationships outside of work in these social situations that these conferences present, but also where you can make new relationships and maybe consider attending events with some of your colleagues. They can be your wingman, wingwoman. You can be their wingman, wingwoman, and help you navigate these events for each of you to make new contacts. Next, look at the roster of speakers and sponsors. See where you can meet with individuals directly. Speakers would love to meet with people. The individuals that do satellite sessions, they would love to meet with people. That's why they're going. Sponsors would love to meet with individuals. Set your expectations about whether you're a buyer, a potential buyer or not, but being upfront and asking for the meeting anyway is always going to be well received. If you see a company on the speaker or sponsor list, that happens to be a company of one of your colleagues, reach out to that colleague and see what their role is, if any, in the sponsorship or speaker role and see how you can help. Obviously, they're there for a purpose as well and learning what other individuals' purposes are and reaching out to see how you can connect and help them, 
that aspect of service will allow you to have more meetings and more interactions. Also, look on Facebook, LinkedIn, your contact list, your address book, so to speak, in your email. See who in your network lives in that town of the conference and aim to meet someone during your time in the city, whether they're from your industry or not, whether they're associated with the conference or not. But I would use that geographic convenience of seeing how you can meet with individuals. And when attending an event at the conference, I would make a point of walking up to at least one person in each event who looks more uncomfortable than you and aim to be of service to that person. Aim to be of service to put them at ease and open up that chat with them. I can tell you that no matter how awkward it may seem or strange they may think it is, although they're at a networking event, they shouldn't really think it's that strange if somebody's trying to talk to them, they're going to be relieved. Regardless of how visibly awkward it may look on the outside, inwardly they're going to be relieved that someone started talking to them. They're going to be relieved by the gesture that you've made. And if you're not sure how to open the chat, listen to the prior podcast episode where I cover a resource that helped me improve my conversation starters because it was something that I used to struggle with as well. And I still reference this material every day when I go to these types of events. So I would definitely go back to the last episode. A few activities that you can do after the conference to follow up. And again, this again is not an exhaustive list, but if you do just these three things, you will be ahead of most people who typically when they meet people at conferences, like the business cards and the names and numbers go like into network oblivion and they never get it touched again. So again, if you just do these three things, you're going to be ahead of most people. Look up each person you met and send them a LinkedIn connection request with a personalized note indicating where you met them. And use that as a foray to start to talk after the fact, after the event. Second, put on your calendar two weeks from the day of the event or two weeks from the day you come back or a suitable time frame for you, maybe based on your discussion or what's going on. But anyway, I just kind of ballpark two weeks out from the event and put it on your calendar to reach out to that person. Don't let it die. Reach out. If you have nothing to say when you reach out, even simply reaching out and saying, hey, we met at the blank conference and I wanted to reconnect see what you're working on based on our discussion, see how it's been since you've been back from the conference. I mean, any sort of just light conversational topic and just end it with see where I may be able to help or vice versa. I just wanted to stay in loose touch as we discussed. And that's it. Again, you can't control if that person is going to call you back or email you back, but you just doing the effort also just keeps you in their mind. So I would do that note in two weeks and then reach out or, and again, it could be the time frame that you is most suitable for you. And then again, I would put their name on your calendar in three months or, again, another time that is suitable based on your discussions. But let's just ballpark three months from the day of the conference or the day you got back from the conference. Put their name and number and email address on your calendar three months from that day. And when that time comes around three months from now, evaluate what communication has happened up to that point and determine if you should reach out because you haven't reached out in three months or haven't spoken to them in three months, or if you should move it to a later date because you've been chatting in those three months. But have a tickler effect on your calendar pop-up to think about them in three months and see what you should do. Applying these points will put you ahead of most people who attend events. Most people do not do this. And it's really easy. It's really easy. These points will enable you to genuinely nurture your network and keep it primed for when you need it. Additionally, attending the conference in general, just shows your commitment to your profession and notches you up in the views of connected people by simply participating. And as you meet people, genuinely listen, be an ear, connect people that can help each other, share ideas. This way, when you need it, when you need the ear, you need the connection, you need the idea. When it's time for you to need those things, people will be happy to help because you've helped them. I'm so proud of you for taking these steps, listening to the podcast, taking these steps that we talk about to make yourself marketable now while you don't necessarily need it. You know, most people wait for that unexpected job change to happen and then they're scrambling to learn this information. So kudos to you. Like seriously, give yourself a major pat on the back for doing something for you today and doing it proactively because that's key. So were any of these networking tactics for conferences, any of these tactics that I mentioned today new to you? If so, I'm really glad. And if they are not new to you, I'm going to ask you a particular question. Are you doing these activities? Because if not, knowing them is not helping you, right? Knowing them is just taking up space in your brain. You need to take action. Action is really where it's at. So let's take action 
on today's episode. In addition to planning your next conference and now having a checklist of what to do before and after, additionally, I want you to take our job landing quiz at joblandingquiz.com. See what other job search information you either don't know or you're not doing that if you had to find a job fast today, it would hinder your ability because you don't know it and you're not doing it. So I want you to identify those knowledge gaps now before you need it. So take the quiz and once you receive your score, which will identify your knowledge gaps, you will get access to free training that will help you fill in those knowledge gaps and apply what you are learning today. So remember, for the next few episodes of the Pretend Your Fire Today podcast, we're going to continue to go through a list of tactics and activities to do, things to do now, as if you were let go today to ensure that you are always ready for whatever your company or the world brings your way. The first item on that Pretend Your Fire Today action list was getting your resume updated. And we cover that in episodes one through eight. The second item on the list is updating your LinkedIn profile, which you can review in episodes nine through 12. And in the last few episodes, some of the topics we covered are, you know, the five most common career mistakes that I see smart people make each and every day. You're going to want to listen to that one. How to work with recruiters, three easy ways to connect with your network when you don't need them is one we just recently covered. And in the next episode, I want to show you ways to maximize your business travel to nurture your network. I mean, the way I see it, you're making that trip anyway for work, right? So multitask on the trip and get some networking collateral in play and make some easy connections. I'm going to show you some easy ways to do this so you can develop your network with these trips you're already doing. I'm all about like compartmentalizing uh, or not compartmentalizing. You don't want to have networking time and this time and that travel time and this work. Like see where you can do multiple things in one activity. So I'm going to help you do that. My friend saved me with her priceless advice, pretend you're fired today and I'm paying it forward with you. I ask you to pay this sentiment forward Share this podcast and this message with as many executives and rising professionals that you know, and they would benefit from this build it before you need it advice. We want people to build their demand before they need it. So if you know someone who can benefit from this, I ask you to share it with them. You will be doing them a favor and to educate yourselves on the actions of the pretend you're fired today activity list. Go take our quiz at joblandingquiz.com. In addition to the activities to stay in demand before you need it, you're going to see what else you may not know and how to fill in that knowledge gap with the free training that we offer that's coupled with the quiz. So in our next episode, we're going to show you how to maximize your business travel to nurture your network with work that you're already doing, trips you're already making. So thanks for joining me today, and we will pick up again in the next episode. Have a great week. This is the podcastfactory.com.